Hello guys, today what we're going to talk about is uh, reorganizing your content library, tidying it up so it's easier to use, and also the location of various folders on your computer for other purposes that you might need them. So uh, you probably know that when you buy content, it'll uh, install in various folder names. So for example, this uh, this Warhammer set here has installed something into uh, figures, but it's also put something in props, something in poses, and it's all over the place. So if you want to find everything that you purchased with that purchase, you have to go hunting, and it's not always obvious where the stuff should be. So what I like to do is I like to rearrange my content. But here's something that you might not know. Every type of content has its own its own um, suffix name. So for example, things in figures will be uh, CR2 or CRZ. Props will be PP2, I think it is, and PPZ. Um, and and uh, each will have their own suffix, but they don't have to stay in the category that they were put in. For example, it's really common when you get buildings, um, buildings I would consider a building or a prop or a tree to be a prop rather than a figure. Um, and it doesn't make sense really to have them spread over two different folders. You know, for me, a prop is an item which uh, doesn't have morphs attached to it, generally speaking. So it could be a carpet, could be um, could be a hat or a piece of clothing that, that doesn't morph. Uh, could be, um, you know, trees or terrains or stuff like that. But when you buy them, they'll often be put into the into the figures or characters uh, category instead. And so what I've done is I've decided that all of my uh, all of my uh, building and environments will all go into figures rather than spread between figures and props and anywhere else they might go i could just as easily have put it in props and that would have probably made more sense but that this was the category i chose so you you probably know that you can grab a folder and drag it into other places or at least grab content and drag it to other places um so here i could drag this and drop it in there okay or maybe i can't Okay, that's not letting me do that, but um, you can certainly drag the in, inside content into other places. But it's a very, very slow way of doing it. You could even right-click, show in Explorer, and then do it in Explorer. But it's far better if you just open up Explorer, two, two Explorer windows, and then just drag stuff around as you want. So there's one. Um, let's have another one open. making a mess of this already there's another one let's pull that first one back up and there you go so now i've got two explorer windows open and i can start rearranging stuff according to my to my fancy so what are the categories well strangely enough the name categories in explorer or in in the actual folder structure are not the same as the names in the program so for example you have figures here but in Explorer, the folder name is characters. Then you have pose and the, the name there is pose. Um, then you have expressions and the name is faces. Uh, hair, the, the name's the same. Hands, the name is the same. Well, singular hand, it was almost like it was all created without any consistency. Props uh, is prop. Um, let's have a look what else there is. Oh, actually, no, props is props. Uh, lights is light, singular. Cameras is camera. Materials, materials. And scenes is scene. So, not really consistent. So, where are they all stored? Well, before we can talk about that, we just need to talk about um, the general structure. So, here we have uh, my hard drive. So probably if you installed it in the default location, it's going to be on your C drive and it's going to be in program files, uh, poser, then it's going to be in poser software. Or if you have um, if you've not bought poser 12 or you haven't updated poser 11, it will be either in a subfolder called uh, Smith Micro or if you've got a really old version of poser, it could even be in a subfolder called Curious Labs. So I'm almost certain you won't have one of those. I don't think that went much beyond version 6. So for the modern versions of poser, poser 11 and 12, they're going to be in this subfolder in Program Files called Poser Software. And then inside there is the version number of poser you're using. And inside there 
you'll find runtime and runtime is where all of the poser content is stored so that would be geometries that will be all of those categories i just showed you that will be python scripts um and then there's a few other folders which are not stored in here so if i go into my runtime now um you will see there's another folder here called libraries now i actually haven't installed anything in this version of poser 12 my my content is actually installed on a second drive and i strongly recommend that you do that because then what it means is your backup policy, hopefully you have a backup policy because there's nothing more annoying than losing a hard drive, which will inevitably happen, and then wasting years of work of creations you might have created or uh, just even just organization. So here on my my uh, computer, I've got uh, a boot drive, which just has my operating system. I have uh, programs and basic data there. Then I have, um, uh, this is for work in progress. And this is just general download. So for me, on my D drive, here's my programs. I've got a folder here called Poser 6, which is just an old runtime of Poser 6. Uh, I have Poser 12 content, 11 content, and um, an installation of Poser, Poser 12 elsewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Program Files. And you'll see here that I've got Poser Software. And I'm going to go into Poser 11 for this one. There's my runtime. That's the important folder. And then inside there, there are a few important uh, folders. There's textures, Python, and libraries. For now, we're just going to go into libraries. Um, and in libraries, now you've got these categories. The reason I chose this installation rather than my Poser 6 installation, which is my main working folder, is that this is nice and clean. So you can see those categories laid out. And then you see here, for example, character, which is figures in Poser. Inside there, you can just see the stuff laid out. So I've got my cartoon characters there. And if I wanted to, I could drag these folders around. Now, individual files have different um, different uh, file su uh, suffixes. So this is a CR2 type. It's a character. Um, if I went into um, poses, for example, that would be uh, PZ2 probably. Yep, they are PZ2 there. Or they could be PZZ, which would be a compressed folder. Uh, a, compre a compressed poser pose file goodness me my words again but i can even though this is in the pose category i could just drag these into a different category so i could drag these from pose into character for example and they work perfectly fine the suffix is what tells them what they're supposed to be uh and and that's kind of that's it really uh the main ones for suffixes are props which can have certain properties like hierarchies and things that they'll auto attach to hair which will automatically attach to uh heads and um and then um the others will just tell them if they're pose files or face expressions or whatever okay so now we know where they're stored there are a couple of other important things we need to look at you might need to use these sometimes there's a uh, above the um above the libraries level here is a geometry file and this is really useful if you ever want to just get at the raw uh 3d files that, that are used to create the figure so here for example i'm looking at aj sparrow i don't know what that is okay it's a spaceship and if i expand that you'll see all geometry is stored in object or obj files and uh, you can load those into loads of other programs including 3d printers by the way and there's the geometry so this might be a useful place to look for geometry when you want to create morphs based off geometry uh, you can make them within the program but this is also another way of doing it um, and also there are times when you want to take the geometry and use it in other programs and then there's another one in here uh, another important one is the python folder and the python folder if i go into poser scripts here is where you have the scripts that that you might have installed such as um, um various uh scripts by snarly gribbly for example so you've got easy dome here easy skin here uh or scripts by other third-party vendors um unfortunately the new way of installing scripts doesn't seem to put them here um, I don't know where they are, to be honest. Um, uh, it, it was a way of protecting them from piracy, 
but it's just a pain in the ass what what they've done they've just made it much less user friendly okay then there are a few other things that you might need to know one is the render cache so the render cache is whenever you do a render that render is stored so let me go into poser here and I'll just load a quick statue now if I do a render here that render is stored in renders and renders are stored in my render cache so I can right click here do show an explorer and that will give me the paths where they are so in this case it's on my C drive users computer name so whatever your name of your computer is and then documents poser render cache so you might wonder why why you need to get at that and incidentally there's a exr that's um um capable of storing high definition images as well high resolution images high dynamic range images which have uh, uh, a much greater range of uh, brightness values basically but supposing you've rendered 30 or 40 different images or however many you've set your render cache to be here if i go in edit preferences and i can set the number of renders that are cached here my system holds up to 200 renders um that's where you're going to find them in that in that cache there so to get to them you just go to your c drive users your computer name and then uh ba -ba 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 -ba, documents poser render cache and there they are and then if you if you want to delete them in poser over here you have to right click on each one do delete but if you want to delete them in explorer you can simply select all of the renders and press delete like that and then they're gone um i don't know why yeah there you go it's gone okay right so um that's a useful one uh are there any more folders that i need to tell you about oh yes the last one is your downloads folder um you're probably not going to need to get in and and um, do anything with that but that is wherever you set your downloads to be when you install the program so for me it's on my my second drive poser 12 content so wherever you set the content uh, the content library to be is where this is going to be and then there's the downloads there and then that's another folder and what you'll see is that poser by default has doc has a downloads folder here for anything that you've downloaded commercial stuff that you bought directly from um, bondware's website renderosity so that's just a quick one hopefully you find that useful remember you can move your content around any way you like so long as you don't move the textures and you oh, i didn't tell you where the textures were sorry that's one more thing uh that, that's actually quite important you're probably going to need that if you start getting getting into uh changing the look of your stuff so textures is in the runtime and then there's a textures folder there and then there's the individual publishers textures underneath um and that can be really important this is for a little 3d character called pink and there's the texture for that character there okay so uh as i say it's really important because if you don't organize your runtime you're quickly going to find a million different vanity folders which don't really help you let me just open it up again which don't really help you when you're navigating when you're trying to find different content uh you know if you imagine if i had a folder here called um i don't know stone mace and then a folder here called fred blogs a folder here called imagine 3d another one so i've got 5 10 15 20 50 folders all named after the vendor none of which tell me what what's inside them <coughs> inside them sorry whereas if i drag the content out of those folders in in file explorer and organize them more logically as i've done here so i've got anatomy animals and dinosaurs buildings cartoon characters you can see the categories i've got here um then that makes it far easier when you want to search so i know i want a building in an environment okay is it an inside or an outside building well i know it's uh 
uh, a building city inside or outside so I'll click on that is it modern is it historical is it Roman uh, okay so there's a Roman category here so let me go and check where's my Roman category okay Greek and Roman probably here we go Greek and Roman okay and then I look inside there and then there's the individual content I never keep vendor name stuff because I don't care who made it I've got that name in the downloaded zip and that's all I need to know about them. All I keep is product names. So here now I've got um, uh, Courtyard, which is one that I use quite often. And now I can just double click to look at the Courtyard and there's the elements that I might want to, to load. So I strongly recommend, as I say, that you reorganize your content to make it easier to navigate. And I even more strongly recommend that you have at least one extra drive so you separate your your boot drive from your content drive and your program drive and the reason for that is that your boot drive is going to have your uh, your cache on there so when you run out of memory it's going to be using that and it's also going to have a very very high traffic on it so it's going to have virtual memory it's going to have lots of programs installing if you install games and stuff on there they're going to be accessed an awful lot and that drive is very likely to be the one that dies quickly so especially if you use steam for example if you put steam on a second drive then when this drive dies eventually as it probably will all you need to do is reinstall steam and all of the games will already be preloaded onto your second drive you don't need to reinstall the, the games and when games are 100 gigs a time or more that really is a massive saver in download time but also i have a regular a backup regime where i back up all of my drives onto uh, an offline drive uh, an external drive and um, i use i use uh, if i can find it da, 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 a cronus true image and what a Cronus True Image does is it, it automatically backs up anything new. I, I run it once a week, once a month, something like that. And by having it on an offline drive, it means that if some malware gets on my main drive, my offline drive can't be encrypted by ransomware. And it, it the chance of that drive also being infected. So here's my here's my um, a Cronus True Image. True image ga 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 and um so it means that i'm more likely to have my content protected so here you can see i've got my samsung drive that's my boot drive d e and f which is my working drives and uh, then i've got a movie drive so if there's any piece of advice that i could possibly give you get yourself a 10 or a 12 terabyte external drive get yourself a copy of a cronus true image or some similar backup software it doesn't have to be this um and don't wait till you lose years worth of photos or content that you've created as i did uh start a backup regime now because i can tell you it's absolutely devastating when you when you lose a drive and you lose important stuff and on that note guys i will wish you well and hopefully you got something from this video take care